Hey, what is up mortals? It is Grog Funky here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 7 of What If Deku Was a Dragon Slayer. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. And so, we begin. Urza Scarlet retreated several feet from the hand villain, who announced that his name was Tomura Shigaraki. You are a cool customer, Titania. I would expect nothing less from the woman they call Ruby Blitzkrieg. But there's no way you can match Nomu's strength with those injuries. After all, Nomu was designed to be the anti-symbol of peace. These injuries will definitely make it harder to fight, but a true warrior never gives up. Besides, I have to protect my students. I have been charged with their safety. With those bold words, Urza renewed her attack against Nomu. Unfortunately, it did not go very well. The injuries to her elbows diminished the power of her slashes. Before, she was easily able to lop one of the creature's arms off. Now, she could barely cut through the creature's thick black hide. Shigaraki laughed at the bladed hero. <laughs> For such a show, I can at least send you out of this world like a warrior. The gray-haired villain turned to his monstrous sidekick. Nomu, finish her off and then kill the children. Over to the side of the battlefield, three of Urza's students watched the battle with growing concern. Midoriya, Wendy, and Kaminari knew that if this battle continued, then their teacher might get killed. That idea supered the youths into action. Midoriya looked at his comrades with a determined expression. Kaminari, you're the fastest of us. Use your speed to get behind Shigaraki and knock him out with your lightning. Wendy, use your cure magic to heal Sensei's wounds. I'll hold down Nomu. Wendy looked at her green-haired friend with a determined look. Good plan, Midoriya. I'm with you. Kaminari gave the two dragon slayers a thumbs up. I'm in too. Let's do this. The three students rushed onto the scene and did as planned. Each of their magic users was determined to protect their teacher and their friends. Kaminari used his lightning body spell to get behind Shigaraki. The electric youth then zapped the gray-haired villain until he passed out. Funny. I figured a creepy looking dude like this would be able to take more juice than that. Guess you should not judge a book by its cover. Now, let's make sure you cannot cause us any more trouble. I've wanted to use this spell for some time. The electric teen focused his magic power, and a magic circle appeared on the ground underneath Shigaraki. Kaminari then shouted with a firm voice, LIGHTNING MAGIC! PARALYSIS BINDING! With those words, ropes of electric energy appeared around the handed villain. Wendy rushed over to Urza and checked her teacher's injuries. The small girl had seen the injuries inflicted from a distance, but they looked even worse up close. The skin of both elbows had been dissolved, for lack of a better word, and the muscle was way more damaged than she thought. Wendy was amazed that Urza could still move her arms at all after receiving an injury like this. The blue-haired girl silently wondered to herself if Urza was even human. With those thoughts running through her mind, Wendy set to work healing her teacher with her cure magic. Midoriya wasted no time going on the attack. The fire-eating youth lit his hands on fire and shouted at the top of his lungs, FIRE DRAGON! CRIMSON LOTUS! The green-haired youth unleashed a barrage of flaming punches against Nomu. The creature just stood there and took the fiery blows. Midoriya's fists left burning dents in the creature's black hide. The creature then started to advance on Midoriya, the burning wounds healing, but slowly than his other wounds had. Nomu then ran at Midoriya, raising his massive fist to deliver a punch to Midoriya's gut. The powerful man managed to maneuver in such a way so that the blows only hit half of him, but the attack still sent the grenade flying through the air. Midoriya landed a few feet away. Midoriya managed to get his feet under him. I think that blow cracked my ribs. This Nomu guy might just be as strong as All Might. I can't let this thing hit me square on or I'm finished. As Midoriya rambled to himself, Nomu advanced on him at shocking speeds. The bird-faced villain raised his right fist to deliver another blow against the fire user. Midoriya braced himself for the attack, thinking that it was going to hurt, but no attack came. When the Dragon Slayer looked up, the right side of the creature's body was coated in ice. The green teen then saw a trail of ice and followed it with his eyes. Sure enough, running through the battlefield was Shoto Todoroki. Using the break in the creature's attack, Midoriya leaped out of the giant humanoid's path and joined his classmate. Thanks for the save, Todoroki! No problem. I'm just glad I was able to get here in time. The exchange between the two students was interrupted when Nomu broke free of his ice confinement. This caused the creature's frozen limbs to break free from his body. Nomu fell onto the ground in a heap. The destructive being's arms and legs started to regrow. Todoroki maintained a calm demeanor. This is bad. How are we supposed to stop this thing? It can regenerate, but it has a weakness against fire. My blows before healed much slower. That makes sense. Most regeneration quirks don't work well on burns and scars. If we burn his legs and arms away, then that should disable him long enough for the authorities to come and arrest him. That is a good plan. 
But can you generate enough fire on your own to do that? No, but you can use fire on your left side, right? I don't use my left side in battle. Really? Why? The adamant youth got an angry expression on his face. He replied to his classmate with a guarded tone. It's a long story. Midoriya spoke to the bi-colored teen in an annoyed but adamant voice. Well, we don't have time for that now. If we don't do this, Todoroki, then this thing has orders to kill all of our classmates. Do you want their blood on your hands? This video was sponsored by NordVPN. Staying safe online is an ever-growing difficulty, and hackers could exploit you. NordVPN allows you to change your IP address, making you harder to track, securing your privacy. In addition to providing you with safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services. Are you tired of going through two, three, or even four streaming services to watch your favorite anime? Well, with NordVPN, you can change your country and be able to binge shows like My Hero Academia, Naruto, and many others on your favorite streaming services with just a press of a button. Check out the link in the description to get 72% off when buying for two years. This deal is for a limited time. And thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Todoroki stared at his left hand. Thoughts of his father, the flame hero Endeavor, followed through his mind. With these thoughts, all of the anger and hatred he had for the man turned his blood into magma. But then, the enraged boy saw Midoriya before him and his teacher being healed over to the side. The sight brought a sense of calm back to Todoroki. The elemental boy then thought of his classmates fighting for their lives against the villains. He knew he had no choice but to follow Midoriya's plan. There was no way of stopping this beast. Todoroki looked at Midoriya with a determined gaze. Okay, but just this once. That is good for now. I'll take the right, and you take the left. What are we waiting for? Both boys charged up their firepower. Midoriya focused all of his remaining magic power into his fire dragon roar attack. Todoroki's left side started to glow a reddish yellow. The bi-colored teen channeled all of that power into his left hand. As the two heroes in training reached their max power, Nomu finished regrowing his right side. Midoriya and Todoroki wasted no time and unleashed two powerful streams of fire. The waves of fire hit Nomu with a blistering force. The mindless beast tried to charge forward, but was unable to break through the awesome burning display of the two 1A students. The flames of the two youths were so bright that the areas blanketed in a blinding light. After several minutes, the light subsided and the scene was revealed was shocking. Nomu laid on the ground, missing both of his arms and legs, as well as most of his torso. Todoroki and Midoriya had fallen to their knees. Both of the teens were completely drained of energy after such an attack. A short distance away, Wendy, still healing Urza, had witnessed the display of firepower. Great job, you two! Now I need to do my part and heal our master! Back at the front gate, Bakugo and Kirishima had captured Kurogiri. The two boys had then had Saro use his tape to secure the villain. Just as the boys finished tying up the shadowy villain, the front door of the USJ burst open. All Might walked in with a stern look on his face. The number one hero had run over here to fight the bad guys, but was shocked to find that the leader of the attack had been captured. Bakugo saw All Might standing there with a shocked look on his face, and spoke in a choky tone. Are you just going to stand there, or are you going to help us with this guy? This comment by the brazen youth broke the muscular man out of his thoughts. The tall man walked over to check on the villain. Turned out that the boy did a good job of restraining him. The number one hero showed his students his approval by giving them a thumbs up. Not too long after All Might's arrival, the other UI staff members and the police arrived at the USJ. The rest of the stray villains were rounded up and arrested. Shigaraki and Kurogiri were placed in a reinforced transport van and were taken to police headquarters. Detective Sukoichi took charge of the scene. After greeting his friend All Might, the detective went to work. All right, and everyone make sure that the lead villains are transported to the precinct for holding first. I will wait to question them first. The dapper man then turned to Principal Nezu. Principal Nezu, I wanted to tell you that we will be conducting a full investigation into the incident. I understand, Detective. You have my full permission to proceed. If anyone gives you trouble, just send them to me. Thank you for your cooperation. Wendy spoke up at this point. Sir, what about Miss Scarlet? No need to worry, young lady. Your teacher is doing fine. She still has several broken bones, but I'm told that most of her injuries were not as serious as they should have been. All in all, I would say she'll be back teaching in no time. Wendy and the other 1A students sighed in relief. All of them had been worried about their teacher. Even after Wendy's healing, the red-haired woman was still in bad shape. Wendy started to cry at this thought. If only I was able to use my healing power better, then Miss Scarlet wouldn't be in the hospital right now. Midoriya and Kaminari walked over and put their hands on the small girl's shoulder. This action caused the female dragon slayer to look up at her friends. Wendy, this isn't your fault. Those villains had very destructive powers. Our teacher was lucky that you were there to render first aid to her. He's right, Wendy. You were awesome. 
Mina Ashido butted in with her usual perky enthusiasm. I totally agree! You were awesome! By the way, why didn't you tell us that you had two quirks like Todoroki? Wendy then got a worried look on her face. Well, it isn't that I didn't want to tell you, it's just that I focused on training my air powers to get into UA. My healing powers work very slowly. I figured that wouldn't be much use in becoming a hero. I'm afraid you're very wrong in the line of thought, Miss Marvel. Principal Nezu walks up to the blue-haired girl with a knowing look in his eyes. While your healing powers may not have not helped you get into UA, they are not useless at all. Even if they're weak right now, that does not mean that they cannot get stronger. The power to heal others is a rare one in this world. From that, Recover Girl told me, even with Urza's superhuman levels of durability and strength, she would have still been in the hospital for a month. But using your power, you cut that time in half. From now on, train your healing powers with the same vigor that you train your combat power. Wendy tried her best to stop crying, but the praise from her friends and the principal was too much. It took the emotional girl several minutes. Finally, Wendy managed to reply in a shaky and raspy voice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. You are most welcome. Nezu then turned to face the whole class. You twenty have been through quite an ordeal today. Please expect my apology for that. After the police have gotten what they need, I want all of you to go home and get some rest. Class 1A responded with a group, Yes, sir! Later that day, a convoy of armed trucks was moving the captured to the holding facility. The lead truck was carrying Shigaraki. The gray-haired man was sitting in the back of the vehicle, alone with his whole body restricted by a giant cuff-like device. Shigaraki was fuming at the fact that he had gotten captured by a bunch of kids. He was even more angry that All Might never even showed up. As the man sat stewing over his massive failure, a symbol appeared on the wall. The design looked like a Z with an I in the middle. Shigaraki's eyes went wide when he saw the symbol. The thin man knew what the symbol meant. Shigaraki's mouth went dry as he spoke. Master Seraph? A voice spoke through the symbol with an even tone. Tomura, I see that you have failed in your mission to kill All Might. Not only that, but you got yourself captured. So, are you here to gloat? Shigaraki never liked this man. He was a partner of his master's. He had known Zeref for a long time, but he did not trust him. Yes, but I'm also here to release you. Why would you want to do that? You hate me after all. I only hate one person in this world, Tomura Shigaraki, and it is not you. But to answer your question, your master still has use of you. My partnership with him is essential to my goals. That is the reason I am spending my time retrieving a spoiled brat like you from the consequences of such a terrible man. I hope you don't expect a thank you. What would I do with your thanks? Now hold on. Suddenly the truck swerved to the left and crashed into something. Shigaraki was thrown to the floor of the truck. The impact caused the angry man to black out for a minute. When he awoke, the dark figure of Zerov stood on the back door of the truck. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would like to just let you know that we the Celestials have many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description. So feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.